In recent years, a new dimension has been added to flying. Vertical flight by helicopter. The very speed on which the aeroplane depends can sometimes be a handicap. Only a helicopter can hover. Only a helicopter could reach this storm-bound lighthouse. Vertical movement was man's first vision of flight. For centuries, he tried to copy the free, controlled flight of birds and insects. He hadn't the eye of the slow motion camera to follow the subtlety of wing movement of birds, such as the hummingbird, but his attempts were brave enough. Not succeeding, he gave flight divinity and held it blasphemous to try to reach the stars. But men of vision, like Leonardo da Vinci, continued to search for a means to fly. He experimented with flapping wings and whirling wings. It was he who applied the word helix, meaning spiral, to whirling wings. Helix, combined with pteron, meaning wing, becomes helicopter. Leonardo da Vinci's whirling wing design was similar to the Chinese top, a toy whose origin is lost in early Chinese history. The top consists of a pair of wings at the head of a stick. About two and a half centuries after Leonardo's death, an Englishman, Sir George Cayley, developed a more elaborate top on similar lines. His interest had been aroused by a model made by Lannoy and Bienvenue in France. The Lannoy and Bienvenue top consisted of two sets of wings, which rotated in opposite directions. Its unusual flight caused a sensation when demonstrated before the Academy of Sciences at Paris. By now, men had learned that if the blades of a wing or propeller are set level, they will only whirl when rotated. But if they are set at an angle and then rotated, the blades will produce lift. Cayley gave to the world the first plans for a man-carrying helicopter, the aerial carriage. His lead was followed by many others throughout the 19th century. But they all lacked a sufficiently light and powerful engine. At the end of the 19th century, men like Ponton d'Amicor and Follanini were trying to adapt steam engines to aircraft, but without success. Others, notably the Wright brothers, were working on fixed-wing airplanes. The development of the gasoline engine, which utilizes an easy-to-handle fuel, made possible man's first successful full-scale flight in 1903. Had the first successful flight been achieved with a rotary wing helicopter, the history of flight might have been different. The achievement of the Wright brothers overshadowed all others and established the fixed wing aircraft. But the moving wing still had its advocates. For the first 30 years of the century, they went on trying to make machines which would rise vertically into the air. Breguet produced the first helicopter to leave the ground with a pilot aboard. The machine was unstable, but it did prove that the rotating wing aircraft was feasible.
But all these early machines were unstable, and for safety, the aircraft had to be tethered to the ground. The stability of a rotary wing aircraft is particularly difficult. First, the rotation of the blades tends to make the body of the machine turn in the opposite direction. This can be counteracted either by a small vertical tail rotor driven by the same engine as the main rotor or by two sets of main rotors revolving in opposite directions. Secondly, when the machine moves forward, one blade of the rotor is moving with the airflow while another is moving against it. The airspeed of a blade increases as it turns towards the nose. This produces unequal lift and therefore instability. The answer to this problem was to hinge the blades so that they could flap and could also speed up or slow down relative to each other. Juan de la Sierra discovered this and so managed to smooth out much of the irregularity of lift. This solved another problem. As the blades of the rotor are no longer rigidly fixed, they are held in position only by centrifugal force. The whole structure is therefore relieved of a great deal of strain. The Sierra aircraft, like this C-19, all use this principle of the flapping blade. But they were not helicopters. They were autogyros. In an autogyro, the propeller produces forward motion and the rotor is turned by the aerodynamic forces acting on it, and not by the engine. The autogyro was in fact an aeroplane on which the wings were replaced by a rotor. The ordinary autogyro could not take off vertically, although its takeoff run was very short. In later years, Vertical takeoff was achieved in the autogyro by coupling the engine to the rotor. This principle could be used only for the takeoff. Meanwhile, work on helicopters went on. In 1930, Florine showed his machine with a new flapping blade to the public at the Brussels exhibition. In the same year, Descanio established the first world helicopter record with a flight of eight and three quarter minutes, covering 1,000 yards, at a height of 59 feet. He reached a speed of about 15 miles per hour. Six years later, in 1936, the Pioneer Breguet came to the front with a much improved design in which the problems of control were tackled with considerable success. Records were established with this machine. Duration, 63 minutes. Altitude, 515 feet. Distance, 27 and one half miles at a speed of 62 miles per hour. Breguet used what is today known as cyclic pitch control. This means that the angle at which a rotor blade meets the air is altered as the blade rotates with the hub. By photographing the blades in slow motion, they can be seen to rise and fall with the influence of the airflow and centrifugal forces. When the aircraft is taking off, the pilot holds the stick roughly central and the lift force is acting vertically. The pilot moves the stick forward. The advancing blade, furthest from the camera, decreases in pitch and flaps downwards. The retreating blade, nearest the camera, increases in pitch and flaps upwards. In effect, the rotor is tilted forward. It thus becomes the means of accelerating the aircraft forward as well as the means of supporting it in the air. The pilot decides to turn to the right. Stick right. The blade on the left flaps up. The blade on the right flaps down. The aircraft goes into a right-hand turn. In 1937, the first really successful helicopter, the Fokker Achgelis, was announced. The flexibility and control of this machine were demonstrated when Hannah Reich flew it inside the Berlin Sports Stadium. Then another of the pioneers, Igor Sikorsky, 
who had been working on helicopter design from the beginning of the century, achieved success in America. All these discoveries helped to produce the helicopter.